Brad, is it getting close to, to crunch time now? Oh, well, I mean, if you analyse it like that, potentially. Um, you know, what are we, five games left in the regular season? So there's, um, there's going to be a lot of big games come up, coming up in those next five weeks. But as I've always said, what we're trying to do and focus on is to, to play footy that's capable of beating the best teams when it really matters. So that's firmly where our focus is. And, and to be honest, as soon as we start thinking about outcomes, we take our eye off what's really important, which is you know, what we need to do to be a good side. I guess probably for the, one of the first times this year, last week, you didn't play that style of footy. Yeah, we're really disappointed. Um, you know, we, you, know, you can put all sorts of you know, excuses or reasons as to why you think that happened, but the reality was we just we didn't play with the ferocity that we've come to expect. Um, you know, we let ourselves down in, in probably all facets of the game. Um, you know, one of the things that, that wasn't too bad last week is that the guys are all trying hard, and we've got enough evidence to back up that the, the, the effort was there, but the, the effort in the system that we want to play just clearly wasn't there. And compounding the problem, Collingwood's pressure was outstanding. So it all, it all compounds to the point where it's an 11 goal loss. Straight on to the big topic of the week, which is the rules trial. I assume you were in the meeting yesterday. How was the mood of the meeting? Yeah, it was, it was, it was very good. I, look, I continue to be um, incredibly impressed by the, the calibre of people that are charged with the responsibility of, of making decisions in the best interest of the game. Uh, there are some incredible people of really high calibre who speak a lot of sense when it comes to the game that we all love. Um, so, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a really important discussion to have. Uh, but again, I just uh, put everyone's minds at ease that there are some really impressive people um, that are working really hard to, to look at the game in all its forms and look at how we can make it better. And you know, I know that there's a lot of emotion in issues like this, but I can assure everyone that there'll be no decisions made in haste. Uh, there'll be uh, great consideration given to all uh, potential alterations to the game. And as we've seen at the moment, there are a lot of trials. Um, so there's a lot of water to go under the bridge at the moment, but there is a lot of uh, intelligent, considered discussion going on. You mentioned the emotion there. Have you been surprised at the backlash after the suggestion we could have some trials in home and away games later this year? Uh, no, no, and I think that, but again, we're, we're probably, um, you know, I'm not sure of what was said. I didn't actually hear what Gil said, but, you know, again, there'll be nothing done that compromises the integrity of our AFL season. So, you know, I think that there was an extreme option put forward that potentially if there was a dead rubber would we consider trialling um, these things in a in a regular season game so that's that's part of the spitballing process there are there are there have probably been hundreds and hundreds of proposals put forward as to things that we should look at um, but these things get considered and just as quickly as some things are considered they get thrown out now this is one that we've got multiple ways of trialling um, different game adjustments you now whether it be um, you know, I used an example last night on Perth Radio that, that should North Melbourne earn the right to play in the finals but our VFL team miss, we might structure a game with our VFL team against another AFL finalist whose VFL team misses the VFL finals. So if it was to be, for example, if, if it was Richmond's VFL team versus North VFL team, we could trial those rules in a, in a not a real game, but uh, pretty close to it. So there are multiple options to trial these things without going into the regular season. The Lions CEO said this morning on radio that essentially when this was, the suggestion was put up about having the trial in season games, that it was sort of said, oh, that's, that's a bit strong. Is that, was that sum up the mood when it was put up yesterday? Yeah, well, what, what, I think it was spoken about before we even met. So no, it wasn't. It, all the discussion yesterday was around that, look, that's, that's an extreme option and one that's not being strongly considered. So you'd be surprised if that happens by the sound of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah very surprised. But I'm um, not surprised at the reaction. But, um, you know, let's just hose that one down. I, I don't think anyone needs to be too concerned about it. The you fixture in play. Enough, do you think in, in these trials, potentially at second tier level and that sort of thing, for it to be implemented? Is that a big enough sample size to implement it before next year? Yeah, the, the sample size is something that, that has been discussed at length and, and how we can get. Uh, more access to, to more trials and you know, I understand there were some more trials at St Kilda today to look at, at various things and you know all I would say the mood that and the impression that I'm getting is that um, if there are alterations to the way that games played 
to the lay person watching the footy, they won't be able to tell much of a difference. You know, there's, there's a really strong view that you know, the fundamental elements of the game need to be retained. Every uh, option that's being thrown up is always uh, compared against the charter of the game. And if it doesn't meet you know, 99% of the criteria of that charter, then it's discarded. So you know, people don't need to fear that there's going to be dramatic change. Uh, but again, when you look at the, the fan surveys and what people dislike in footy, congestion is always the number one on the agenda. So we've just got to investigate ways that we can make the game a bit more free flowing while retaining all the great contested elements of the game. What do you think is an adequate trial time and what do you sort of see like in the number of games level and, and the length as well so you can have a good long look at it? Yeah, well, I, I think it's, again, how long's a piece of string? I mean, you need a... You need a uh, yeah, look, I think we've got enough. I mean, look, my personal view is, and I, I don't speak on behalf of the AFL or on, on behalf of the competition committee, but my personal view is that, that some of the, the, the alterations that are uh, being spoken about could be, could be implemented next week and it wouldn't be an issue. Coaches would adjust to them very, very easily. Uh, I think the game would look fantastic. And um, so the... That, and that gives, I think, an indication as to the changes that are being looked at are not sweeping. They're not, um, gee, this game's going to look like a, a different sport. You know, they're, they're minor alterations to try and make some adjustments to the thing that's crept into the game over the last 20 or 30 years, which is the increase in congestion. Do you think some coaches are already adjusting and coaching that way in case they come in? Oh, no, no, they're, they're coaching to win their game. Um, so there's... there's I don't think there's a, a gentleman's agreement that hey, let's open up the game so they don't make any changes. Um, but I, I think that what's the natural evolution of the game has always got to be considered. And, and when it gets to a certain point in the season, I think a lot of teams realise that, gee, if we don't score, you know, it's going to be hard to win on a consistent basis. So that, that changes a, a little bit. Um, you know, the weather conditions all, all add up and, and are a factor. Um, but I, yeah, I think coaches are still coaching week to week to win. Um, and again, if these changes are made and these alterations come in, um, you know, it, it's, it's, it's going to be a, a slightly different change, but it'll be well considered, well trialled, and it'll be for the better of the game. I'm really confident in that. The fixture and player movement, Brad, also on yesterday's agenda. Can you tell us anything that was discussed there? Um, not really. I mean, the, I, I think it's, it's more of... Uh, I don't think I'm at liberty to discuss um, all the finer details. I'd, you know, Steve Hocking's been... Uh, very open and transparent with all the things that are being discussed. But as, as chair of those meetings, I think it's it's um, it's his responsibility to speak about those and um, and not for me to comment on. Play West Coast this week. Um, what do you make of the challenge against them and, and how they've been playing recently? We, we do play West Coast. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for getting it back to that. Um, no, we, um, we've been really impressed with the way uh, that they've played this year. I think they've um, played you know, some great footy. They've got you know, well, well documented stars on every line. They've got a lot of guys in contention uh, for all Australian selection, uh, as they should. Um, and what's more impressive than even their individual performances is the way they're playing together as a group. You know, they're, they're probably fielding the, the most experienced team in the competition the last couple of weeks in terms of the 22 they run out. But they've also been able to, to, to blood eight debutantes this year. So. You know, it's been a fantastic mix for West Coast and, and we know it's going to be a huge challenge for us. Uh, but we love playing in Hobart. So you know, I think that's, that's something that we're really looking forward to. And you know, again, our focus is, you know, it's sure it's an important game in terms of shaping uh, ladder positions, but our focus is on playing really good footy that's capable of beating anyone. So West Coast are as good as anyone in the competition at the moment. So we'll get another great test of where we're at. Is there much of an advantage down there? You've got a great record, obviously. Yeah, I think the, the, the record speaks to that to a certain extent. You know, the way that, that we're able to play the ground, uh, we understand the conditions, we played in slightly different conditions each time we've been down there. But our players just you know, really enjoy getting down there and, and competing down there. And, and yeah, there, there's no doubt it's a home away from home. And while we love playing at Etihad Stadium, there, there's a bit of a feeling at Etihad at times that it's, a, it's almost a neutral venue. Whereas Blundstone Arena is uh, a genuine home ground advantage for us. Are you expecting to get Mason Wood back from injury this week? Yeah, I, I think we will. Um, we'll, you know, he trained the main session last week, and as I spoke um, probably this time last week, you know, I suggested that he'd be a good chance to play. And it was a touch and go call post training. He pulled up pretty well, but we just felt that 
given that he improved really quickly, but the time frame between his initial injury um, was was just a little bit too quick last week. So the fact that he, he trained last week was close, should train really well again today. Uh, and if he gets through today, we'll definitely pick him. Um, you know, which is really exciting to have Mason back. But I think just as exciting you know, for us is that Will Walker will make his debut and, and come into the side. Um, Will's been in great form in the VFL over a long period of time. And, and we've, I've spoken a number of times this year about the advantage of having our VFL team this year and being able to train up players to play specific roles so that when they come into the AFL team, they can just move seamlessly into the same system. So Will will come in and it's really exciting for him and, and I expect it to give our team a, a really big boost too because there's nothing like youthful exuberance. Ben Jacobs? No, he won't play. He won't play. Um, we're, you know, we made a, a decision earlier in the week that, um, that he wouldn't play just purely because we'd gone through this cycle of... of um, of train and, and see how he pulls up and, and then he, he wasn't quite right and then we repeat that. We've repeated that four or five times. And there is a, 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 a an amount of evidence that suggests that light cardiovascular work can, can improve concussion symptoms, but that hasn't been the case um, with Ben. So we've taken the decision that we're just going to rest him completely until he has zero concussion symptoms before we do some light cardiovascular work. So. Um, you know, when that'll be, hopefully it's not too far away. But you know, the risk is then that, that he needs to be reloaded again in terms of playing. But you know, as far as I'm concerned, until we get you know, his head and neck right, um, you know, the rest doesn't matter. So we'll just get that right first. Steve said yesterday that um, with the rules um, that he was sort of comfortable, you know, it was the decision to make in October and he was comfortable with the time in between then to, to make a decision. It's only sort of six weeks. Do you think that's a long enough stretch to be able to make a call? Yeah, I, I do. I, there's, been, there's been a power of work done and I, I, I'm not going to go into detail about all the things that have been done. But again, I continue to be impressed every time I sit down at a meeting, one, at the calibre of people that are in the room and the... Um, it's just the, the calm and considered and intelligent uh, thought that is given to it um, and the work that's been done behind the scenes. There's been just an enormous amount of work. Um, so no people can be concerned about the sample size and, and the types of trials, but I can assure everyone that there'll be no decisions made in haste. The Eagles forward line, pretty potent one, Brad, with um, if Mason comes back in, uh, Magic a chance to go back to defence? It, it's really, yeah, it's a good question, Nick, We're, and one we haven't been able to fully answer. Um, you know, we played early this year with a forward line of, of a Brown, White, Zeebel and Wood, and, and we thought that was really effective. So, you know, whether we can substitute that structure of door for, for White, we're weighing up, but also conscious that West Coast have some you know, really potent forwards in Kennedy and Darling, but also Vardy coming into their side as well. So, yeah, the, I suppose that the fortunate thing for us is we had the flexibility to change in-game if we choose to. Sean Higgins, Brad, uh, 200 games this week. What's he meant to the club and how have you seen his time here? Yeah, he's, uh, he's been just an exceptional person. Um, well, his on-field footy speaks for itself. You know, he's, um, I'm not an All-Australian selector, um, and nor should I be because I'm a bit biased, but I think anyone who doesn't have any bias would still think that Sean Higgins has had an All-Australian year. So his footy on-field speaks for itself, but um, I can't speak highly enough of him off-field. He's an integral member of our leadership group, and um, I think he's been more impressive off-field for North Melbourne than he has been on. So he's, uh, he's going to leave a great legacy here at our footy club, and... Um, you know, I've seen a lot of professional players uh, in, in my football journey, um, but Sean Higgins is right up there with the very best of them. Is that in teaching or can you expand on that off-field for us a bit? Everything. He's, um, he, the way he prepares himself to play footy is, is exceptional um, and you know, just his ability to, to work through challenges, to work through injury, um, to always find a way to improve. Uh, he's never won. He's got you know, sublime ability and, and talent. But he's never relied on that. He's always looking to find a better way. And I think he's a, he's a great role model for young players in terms of how to train and, and how to improve. And you know, when, you, when you have guys who are all Australian standard, you know, to see them constantly working harder uh, to get better, it's just a great message for young players. When you got him as a free agent, Brad, did you know he was that good a player and that good a leader? No, no. We, well, I mean, we, we obviously baited him really highly. Um, but I, I think... He's exceeded all of our expectations. I mean, we knew that, that um, 
you know, he could come in and make a real difference for us. But but he's just, you know, I don't think anyone is sort of sitting back saying, gee, that was a just such a, a great insight and a great pick. You know, the, our, our list management guys did a lot of work on him and, and you know, they were confident he was going to be good. But, um, yeah, it's, it's fair to say he's exceeded everyone's expectations. Alex Morgan's calf injury, can you... Any, shed any more light on, on that one, Brett? No, not really. We're, we're a bit gun shy when it comes to calves at the moment, so we're just um, you know, not wanting to lead anyone down the garden path. We just feel that, that the best thing to do is there's, there's a calf injury there. We don't think it's major, but calf injuries have a habit of, of looking minor and then turning major. So um, we'll just rest him for a week, uh, build him up to his, um, through his running program, and then once he's running, we can make a, a, a better assessment of when he'll be back.